business or do you want to do it now? Let's do it until uh, at business. So you want to, I thought you wanted to there's send around and get people's question. opinions. Yeah, but there's a specific question. We'll have okay. to have it Okay, we'll hold it off then. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Yeah, we won't do that until business. Well, they will do is I'll go down the list and see, well, I know we have some people missing. Well, the invocation, Anthony Lucero, somehow he's late. The general evaluator, Justin Mendes, we give him another five minutes or so. But otherwise, we need to fill that role, it's an important role. Bobby Michelli, the grammarian, one possibility is if he doesn't turn up, that the art counter could take that role. Or, what about you, sir? I you, want to, you want to take it? I can. Okay. Very good. And I have to ask you, is it Neil? Neil, Neil yeah. the trotter. Yeah. Okay. So you can make a merit. Now, can you conjure up the word of the day? And the theme of the day is community. So something along the lines of community. Okay. I have paper here. Uh, I have one. Well, okay. oh, no. Currently, now? No, not not yet. Okay. We'll bring it okay. And the really important roles we need to evaluate it for our guest speaker, Sue Horn. Did someone tackle that role? I'm evaluating Tyree. Okay. Well, if someone else, I'll take it myself. Okay. I could take you it. You want to do it? Any? You've got about three more. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. Well, have you ever done an HBO thing? Okay. No. You really shouldn't do this. Okay. Um, it's kind of a more difficult role. I understand. I got it. Yeah. I'll take two. Um, yeah. hmm? I'm getting her on the line right now. Okay. You're going to take the role? I'll take the, I'll evaluate her. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Then the first role, you know, before I bring up the first role, community. What do you mean by community? Toastmasters. Is that a community? This yes. club, District 57, I believe it's international, all over the world. And in fact, speaking of that, we just had the International Convention, a man from D57, Jim Jeffrey, who came here and spoke at this club, we invited him. He came in the top ten, pretty damn good in his first attempt. Absolutely. How about a big hand for Jim Jeffrey? Right. And communities everywhere. It's a tennis community. There's all kinds of community. So we look to hear that ricochet tonight at the meeting. Now, invocation tonight is Anthony Lucero. He's not here. Does anyone on the floor have an invocation they would like to give? Uh, I, since I don't have any to All right, don't forget it. How about okay, so a humorist uh, uh, talking on the phone at the moment? And when he stops doing that? <coughs> We'll just come back to that too. Eddie, yes. Are you set for your role as humorous? Uh, no. I forgot to check. Perhaps the um, off counter could do her role while Eddie's trying to get Sue on the line. Sue's on the line. Humorous! Yes, sir! Okay. Sure. Please welcome Eddie Kaver. Lady's driving down the road, gets pulled over by a cop, and is trying to turn this cop out of a ticket. She's got a little thing working on, and the cop's not interested. We're talking, you know. She's trying to smile, and it's not working. So then she starts the tears. And they're not working in. So the cop says, I'm sorry, lady, I'm used to writing these tickets all the time. And she says, well, fine, whatever. You know what? While you're at it, why don't you sell me tickets to the policeman's ball? Uh, I don't, one, I don't have tickets. And two, policemen don't have balls. 
To which he closed his book and walked away. Ah, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Thank you, All right, with that, we're at the role of general evaluator. We still don't have the person that's supposed to take that role. Anyone like to volunteer for that role? Who's just coming mm -hmm. up? Ah, the general evaluator, right here. Just walk in. No. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have one, sorry. Someone has to. Well, I'm doing a presentation. I can be general evaluator. You can? Thank you. Okay, what is your name, please? Savita. Sabita. Sabita. S A B I T H A. S A B I T A. T H A. Okay. All right. Then come on up and introduce your evaluation team. Please welcome our guest tonight, Sabita. general evaluator and my role is to evaluate the flow of the meeting in general and right now I would like to introduce the functionaries for the evening beginning with the R counter Alison Bliss. <laughs> Can you please explain your role? Thank you Sarita. The role of R counter is to try to help us refrain from using excessive words like uh, um, and, uh, and when you start using those words, you will hear a little click, which Jean says will not torture you, but teach you better how to not use those excessive words. Somebody else will need to count my massive amount of pause. Would you like to say a sentence on the theme of the day? Well, on community, um, I... Um, I am enjoying the community of people in this club and how adaptive everybody is to taking on the roles that they had no clue they were going to do. Thank you. <laughs> Please help me welcome and introduce our grammarian, Neil, who just stepped up to take this role. Neil. Uh, so the grammarian introduces the word of the day. And is that all the community does for this? Yes. Oh, okay. So, so the word I just came up with is schism. And that's a, a separation or a division within a, any kind of organization or group. So an example would be the schism within the community made the community weaker. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Our timekeeper for the day is our president, Eddie. Uh, actually, uh, oh, oh, Mercy. Oh, sorry. Mercy, Mercy is our timekeeper. Mercy. I'll be timing the prepared speakers with, with their allotted time. Like, for instance, if the if the timing is 10 to 15 minutes, I will put on the green light at 10 minutes and then the yellow light at 12 and a half minutes and the red light at 15 minutes and he has 30 seconds to wrap up. And also with the table topics, I'll be timing the speaker, the participants for two minutes. 
One minute, uh, yellow, one minute. One minute yellow, uh, green. <laughs> one minute and a half yellow and two minutes for, for red. And she or he got 30 seconds to wrap up. I will record all the time and I will report at the end of the meeting. Thank you. I will now hand over control to the postmaster. All right, thank you. I just have a point of order, Tom. Yes. How does our remote guest get her time? How does she do what? How does she get her time? time? It's going to be tricky now, yes, because she both going to be on. The, uh, I'll, I'll explain how we're going to do this, if you don't mind. We're, we're, we're ready. Okay. Uh, fellow Toastmaster Sue, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Oops. Um, Let's come through to my speaker here. Let's try one more time. Hello? Well, okay, hang on a second. Can you hear me out? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's better. Oh, there we go. How's that? Can you hear me? Uh, okay. Much better. Thank okay, you. good. Okay, this is what's this the story is, is the the fact that we were given network access, however, the credentials are not working. Therefore, no network access. The plan B was that I would have a copy of Sue's PowerPoint and based on cues given by Sue would uh, advance the slides. Now, to cue the time, I will let Sue know that when we're at green, yellow, and red. And it'll be simple words, Sue. All right. Okay. Uh, and, okay. The, yeah. Oh. All right, so let's just go over the time. You, so I understand you're going to have 10 to 15 minutes to make a presentation. 20? 20. 20. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at 10 to 15. Yeah. And uh, five minutes on the for agenda. the backup. Which, which, what times are you really looking at? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Barely. Barely. Okay, what time do you have for the presentation? total for the presentation and Q&A. And then the evaluation will be separate, correct? That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Right. 20 minutes right, total. Okay, very good. And I have a, an introduction for Sue. Our first speaker is Sue Horn, the immediate past division D governor. And she's making the final presentation of her HBO project, which was her term as division G governor. The objective of her, the term, which ended past June, was to achieve president's distinguished divi division G. She will provide the results of the project, whether or not it was successful or contributed to its success, obstacles, how they were overcome, and her learning as the vision governor. After the presentation, will be a brief Q&A. As a note, the guidance committee members were pretty much in this room, past district governor, Jean Stableham, Jean Cunningham rather, district HBL chair, Terry Johnson, past area 10 governor, Carol Hale, and past division G governor, Kathy Taylor. On um, their email, she has a note, success is not a result of spontaneous combustion. You must set yourself on fire. Please welcome Sue Hall. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. And good evening, leadership committee member and fellow Toastmaster. I am so excited to be here with you tonight via teleconference to do the final presentation of my high performance leadership project. This is actually my last step to getting my ALS and therefore my GTM. And I am so happy. My HBL project was my term as Division G Governor, which just ended in June. Next. As part of this presentation, I'll define the overarching objective of my HTL project, the other performance measures used by the team, and what contributed to the project's success. You'll also hear about obstacles we encountered and how or if they were overcome, as well as a little bit about myself and what I learned as a leader. Are you still there? Still here. Okay, we're getting some feedback. 
You'll have an opportunity to ask questions immediately following the presentation. And I'm really looking forward to your questions and insights as well. Next. The overarching objective of my HDL project as Division G Governor was achieving the President's distinguished division. And as you may be aware, that objective was achieved. Next. By the end of the year, we had eight clubs that achieved distinguished status, and we added one club called Humble Bay Coast Masters of the New Week. There were also other performance measures besides those required to achieve President's Distinguished Division that were also the focus of the Division G Core Team. Our aim was to have a 10% increase in members of the Division to build the Division G community by promoting participation in local events, and to have at least 80% of our officers trained in each of the two training periods. We also focus on promoting high quality content. My focus was on supporting and developing the area governors. And together, we focus on readying our successors. Next. And as you can see from the slide, we were successful. Our membership increased by 8%. We got people out to local Toastmaster events, which we measured through contest participation. We had 11 local training, and as a result, had 80% of our officers trained in the summer session and 67% in the winter session. We distributed a contest kit on TV to facilitate quality contests, and this was provided to each one of the clubs. And we helped ready our by providing a three-hour training ourselves in Sonoma County with almost everybody in person before the June second training. And it was our intent to give some Division G tips and tools that help our successors have really good terms that get off on the right track. So this was a really successful year for the G team. I'll talk about the support and development of the area governors in the following slide. Next. There were a number of things that contributed to the project's success. Next. Next. The first and most important key has to do with completing the Division G success plan. Primarily, defining results for measurable outcomes, which ultimately guided the work of the team throughout the year. Next. Setting up the meeting and communication with the area governors was also key. By our first meeting, we had established every one of our monthly meeting dates for the year. We correlated those with the decum dates, and we also set our contest dates. We made agreements on how we would support each other, for example, by responding to requests for information or requests for assistance in no more than three working days. And these agreements were all defined writing in the Division G Success Plan. Next. The third key was having the area governors complete the area success plan. And their only requirement, they could add more if they wanted, but the only requirement was to tra translate the division goals to which they had helped develop and agree to into strategies and actions specific to their area. Next. The fourth key was that monthly meetings focused on division objectives and results, as well as training the area governors. In addition, each area governor had time on the agenda, not only to report staff for what was going on, but also to indicate things that they were really proud of, and to talk about where they needed some support. Next. Relationship building included not only providing time for each area governor in the meetings, but I have personally committed as a division governor to attending each area contest and made personal contact with each area governor in between meetings. 
And this helps me to create a relationship with each of them to reflect my willingness to help them and support them. And I think effectively help them bond to me as an area of as a division governor. Yes. And the sixth and the final key was a focus on underperforming or at risk clubs. Three clubs ended up becoming our focus two thirds into the year. One was not meeting the eight member minimum for dues, and the other two were not meeting the membership requirements. We ended up focusing on them through frequent communication, emails, phone calls, providing support to the officers, and mentoring. And as a result, turned these three clubs around. So one club met a state member minimum, the other two became distinguished, and as a result, the division became president distinguished as well. Next. Now there were a number of obstacles and challenges that happened during the year. Some of these were overcome, and some of these were not. Next. Despite having eight clubs achieve distinguished status, the total number of DC people achieved across the division compared to the previous year actually decreased. Mm. Low performing clubs struggled under weak leadership. Sometimes clubs don't embrace the DCT, but most often they don't know how to operationalize it or make it part of the officer's agenda. And sometimes clubs are struggling with anxiety and power struggles among the officers. So these stats happen despite all of the officer training and the area visits and communication by the area governor. Next. This slide is a different view of the DCP stats and the club's distinguished status. They should be two charts. One showing DC people by area on the left, and on the right, the distinguished status by the club per area. Just to give you a little bit different perspective. As I mentioned, we overcame the barriers to achieving the President's Distinguished Division by focusing on three clubs for the end of the year, and this helped them to meet their membership requirements. Another obstacle is the geographic size of Division G. There are 225 miles between the northernmost and the southernmost clubs. Next. There is significant travel time between areas. Next. And even within areas. And as a team, we in part overcame this obstacle by conducting our meetings via teleconference at first and then video conference later, and even at trying to get together in a meeting in person in Sonoma County. We did this once, and even though everybody enjoyed it and wanted to do it again, actually scheduling and working out the logistics of people being so far apart was just too challenging for us to do it again. And as a result, the area governors did not really bond to one another. Next. The third obstacle was that the area governors did not really understand their role and what the expectations were. This pointed to what happened during recruitment. It also pointed a little bit to training, as well as the individual self-motivation of the area governors. This particular issue was partly overcome by supplying training during the monthly meetings and through one-on-one -on -one conversations outside of the meetings with individual area governors. There was lots of training provided at Deccan, but my experience was that the area governors needed the information about a month earlier because they were already processing, well, how do I need to put in reports in July before they even conducted their area visit, as an example. Next. The fourth obstacle was really the workload issues for the area governors. There is a lot to get off the ground in the first three months, especially with the travel distance in Division G, and this was particularly overwhelming for the area governors. In fact, one area governor almost quit 
in early August because she was so overwhelmed she didn't know what to do first. And I ended up just talking her off that ledge by setting some priorities, defining the minimal requirements that she should do in her role, and some very specific action steps for moving forward in the following months. And that really helped her move ahead, and she was one of the best team members as a result the final obstacle that I want to share was really a lack of awareness on the part of these area governors of a real ability that they had to make a difference with the club. In a leadership assessment that was completed by the area governors in December and in May, they were, there were comments from them like, we did all of the things that we could within our control. Well, these kind of comments indicated to me that they didn't really understand the correlation between them communicating with clubs, educating them, mentoring the officers, and establishing relationships as being related to the success of the club. And this really did show in the performance differences among the area governors in the slide that I showed you previously that showed these people achieved by area. So we've been talking about obstacles to the project's success and how or if they were overcome. Now we'll talk a little bit about my pre and post leadership skills profile and what I learned as a vision governor. Next. You should be seeing a bar chart on the slide which indicates the results of my leadership skills profile at the beginning of my term and at the end. The six dimensions of leadership are indicated under each pair of bars. As a result of the pre-assessment, I knew that I had work to do in each area, each dimension. However, the three areas I focused on most that I thought would make the most difference for the team were first, the area or the dimension of support, which included keeping informed on progress, using resources wisely, managing the time of the team well. The second area of focus was development, and this included providing learning experiences as well as training and coaching the area governors. And the third area of focus was persuasion communicating the big picture to the Division G team and calling attention to the goal. And as you can see from my pre and post test scores, by the end of the year, I thought I had really improved the most in the area of development. And I think this reflects my shift in thinking and focus of mentoring and training the area governors during our regular meetings. So I learned a lot as a division governor, and some of the most important learnings were these. My next question for the next My first learning was that I really had more leadership skills than I thought. Now, I don't mean this statistically, but this awareness helped me have confidence, especially when I got pushback from the area governor. Next. The second learning was that a focus on division-wide objectives and results, not process or effort, was really key. This helped to keep things objective, to <laughs> avoid power struggles among the group, and to minimize conflict among the team. You're at 15 minutes. Thank you. The third learning was that praising and recognizing team members for the achievements the results, that is, not effort, was really important. By recognizing them, it not only had a positive effect on them, but it also had a halo effect on everyone that witnessed that recognition. Next. The fourth issue, or the fourth learning, excuse me, is that framing was really important for the area governors. I got lots of arguments about why we can't put in a new club and why it wouldn't work, and long emails about what were all the dilemmas. And I, I politely dug in my heels and said, you know, we spent all of our time 
talking about why we can't do it, but it's not an option. We've got to put in a new club. Now let's focus on how we're going to make this happen and who wants to help make it happen. And that work should be the focus of the team. Next. The final thing I want to share is that no one approach to leadership fits all situations. Sometimes I made the decision. Sometimes I was democratic. Sometimes I was directive. And sometimes I was really persistent and didn't take no for an answer. And what I learned is that ultimately I needed to have a varied skill set and be able to pull out the right leadership approach to match the situation. So that's a brief summary of my learnings as a division governor and what contributed to my division governorship being my most rewarding experience as a Toastmaster guest. Next. Now I'd like to open it up for questions. Please try and direct your comments at the phone. Sue will hear them and give a pause. Who's first? Ken? I think your speech was great, but I'd love to see a picture of you. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I couldn't hear that. Uh, Ken, Ken Riccio, right? No. Kukowski. Uh, um, Kukowski was, uh, was saying he'd love to see uh, a picture of you. Uh, Ken, that was because we didn't have the internet. Uh, otherwise, we would have had Sue on video. Okay. 17 and a half. 17 and a half. Next, question. Question regarding the project. Uh, Allison. Hi, Sue. I love that last comment about how you changed your leadership style to match the situation. Could you give us an example of that, of what you mean? Let's see. One example was what I mentioned about being really directive about how we can put in the new club. Another example was when I was really focused on results and focused the team on results, but some of the area governors needed to be lifted up and point out what they were doing right. And so I shifted the focus of rather on uh, looking at results, but looking on at what they were doing. And this helped them actually perform better. Sue, question. This is Tyree Johnson. How did the HPL process help you? Could you have been successful without doing the HPL? That's a great question. Thank you. I am personally a high achiever, so I would have tried very hard as a division governor without an HPL project or committee. However, I feel I learned so much more and got so much more rich information and learning as a result of doing an HPL project and having a guidance team. I don't think I would have I, I don't think I would have left quite as quite as much depth without their help. So I really appreciated that. It made my experience much richer. So quickly would you recommend it for on upcoming leaders in District fifty seven? I highly recommend it. In fact I think it would be a great distance policy require the vision governors to do high performance leadership projects as a division governorship. Savita. Savita. So this is Savita. I was just wondering if one of your obstacles was uh, the camaraderie between the area governors. I actually couldn't hear that question. Savita was questioning uh, if one of the obstacles was the camaraderie between the different area governors. I think the obstacle was actually the geographic distance. Oh. Because they all of a sudden had the online meeting, but they just didn't bond with one another because they didn't see each other enough to have enough different kinds of interaction. They saw me, and so they had more of a relationship with me as a result. And Sue, so we're at the, you're at the limit of your time. Uh, any last closing comment? Just a couple. One, I want to say thank you so much for making time for this presentation on your agenda. I really appreciate it. And I want to express thank you to my guidance committee members. I know Jean is in the room and Tyree is in the room. And I really want to say thank you to each of you, as well as to Chico Hale and Kathy Taylor. 
Thank you. Thank Let's you. Let's hear it for Cal. Great job. Good job. Mr. Toastmaster. If we could take a couple minutes to write her evaluations, uh, pass yes. them to me, to and I will, I will scan them and send them to her. Okay. Okay, very good. Five moment, would you set the clock oh, for oh, two minutes? Let me know in two minutes. Sue, so we're going to take two minutes and then we'll come back with your evaluation. So hang in there. Thank you. Yeah. Right. All right, so now we're going to start the evaluation part of it, and Eddie Cater will open it up, and then we'll get some re some other comments from the other people in the room. So please welcome Eddie Cater. <laughs> I'm going to take off my Superman cape and hang it up, and and, and in honor of Sue Han. Uh, so you gave a great presentation with the difficulties. One, we were supposed to have internet. We worked through this, we practiced it, and it worked well. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm, I'm certainly glad we taught, we did speak about a plan B, and that was to have the slides on hand. Uh, the, the phone is not, my phone is not the greatest, but it worked. Uh, so here's what I heard in your presentation. I heard a voice of confidence, a voice of clarity, and a voice with great information. Uh, you spoke of success plans, and, and that was something that we strove hard at at the district level, uh, of trying to get the area governors to submit success plans. And things don't happen by mistake. They have to have a plan and, and a roadmap, and that was a value we were trying to uh, reinforce. And the fact of the matter is, and in recognition, which you all don't know, Sue Han was the first division governor to submit a success plan. Uh, and she submitted it well in advance of everyone else, months ahead. Uh, her awesome. area governors, uh, and, and, and she submitted a hard copy and it allowed us to share it. The area governors, I don't recall seeing, seeing your area governor reports, but the fact of the matter is, is that your area governors had a success plan speak above well for you. The other thing that you did well in your presentation, you spoke about the six dimensions of leadership, but focused on three as how they meant and worked for your team. And that was support development and persuasion. And the fact of the matter, proof of persuasion is, is being able to talk somebody off the ledge of leaving the world of area governorship. So thank you for that. Uh, you gave great verbal cues as far as queuing up the slides. You, uh, your slides were visual, uh, full of great text. 
Uh, and as someone who knows the Toastmaster brand, the color and the font requirements, you followed that to the letter. I want to thank you for that. It was uh, easy on the eyes. The, if I could uh, get you to do one thing, and that is to avoid the Toastmaster acronym soup. Not everyone in the room, not every club member, not every Toastmaster member knows all the acronyms. DCP, what is that? What in tarnation is that? Uh, so we need to be able to take a little time uh, and explain the, the, the Distinguished Club Program, the DCP, and that would be your introduction to introducing those letters. Or ALS, the Advanced Leader Silver, you explained that at the beginning, the onset, s stating that this is your Toastmaster education journey, your first round. You could have, um, you could have uh, done a little education on that part. And I'm going to stop here and open the floor for other evaluations from other members. Now I'd like to remind you, please speak clearly to this part of the table. <laughs> Jean. So I think this presentation was exceptional. I think that your PowerPoint, thank God Eddie had it, was very professional. It had all the elements of your quest as a division governor. I personally, you know, obviously was right in step with you all year long, and I can't say enough good things about it. I just wish that the internet had worked here so we could have seen you too. Other than that, I think you did a great job. Anyone else? Hi, Sue. Bob DiMatelli. It was uh, great to hear your voice. It was great to see your presentation and your PowerPoint slides. Did you find that since you didn't have to be in person or that you didn't have to be as on the video on a telephone teleconference, that it was actually to your advantage in the presentation because you could actually you look at notes or refer to other items? And if so, is that a, is that an advantage that you would take advantage? Is that a advantage you might take? advantage of in another situation, in another conference. Did you hear it? Sue, did you get that? I actually did not hear any of it. Okay, so in brief, Bob, Bob's question, Bob Demicelli uh, asked, uh, since you, you weren't here in person, not on camera, uh, did you find that uh, using notes uh, made it helpful for you? Uh, or, or, is, is that the gist of the question? Well, it's it, not having to, not being present. Did you find it was to your advantage so that you might even take advantage of that in other conferences? Was it advantageous for you not to be here, not on camera, so you can use notes? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it was actually awkward not to have any visual because I was expecting to have visual cues. And it was also awkward having to add voice prompts to someone else to do the slides. So those were actually a little bit of a distraction for me. And I felt like I had to do more with my voice because I didn't also have my face and facial gestures and hand gestures to add to my presentation. Okay, Sue, so we're at the end of our evaluation period. And I want to thank you again for doing a wonderful job and a great presentation. At this point in time, I'd like to return control to our Toastmaster, uh, Mr. Tom Pony. Thank you, Andy. I'll have a couple more things. Sue, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay. Also, I note that Sue, last year, was the Vision Governor of the Year. She also, as you know, got the President's Distinguished Division, and she now has the DBM. So, thanks so much, and congratulations. Thank you very much. So we can leave you plugged in for uh, Tyree's presentation. Great, thank you. All right. So my next presentation is by Tyree Johnson. I've got the timing down here. You're going to have the same thing, same. 10 to 15 and 50 minute QA. I have an introduction for Tyree. Tyree Johnson has been a Toastmaster since March 2001 a charter member of the Toastmasters Leadership Club. He's recognized for his service leadership. He is honored with multiple awards, 
while serving DISC-57 in numerous capacities. He finds the wisdom, energy, and passion generated by his fellow club members both invigorating and humbling. He strives to adhere to the words of Henry Bergson, who said, think like a man of action, act like a man of thought. As part of his current high performance leadership program, Tari has undertaken the newly developed role as D57 HPL chair. Today he will review his vision and share the elements of winning the commitment in support of the HPL program for District 57 leaders. Please welcome Tari Johnson, District 57 HPL chair, winning the commitment. Thank you so much, Mr. Toastmasters. Fellow Toastmasters guests and Sue, I hope you can hear me clearly. Great. So I'm going to recap what I gave in terms of sharing my vision and my mission back in March. So we're moving forward, but for a lot of you probably haven't heard this. And the first thing, Sue, I want to thank you for sharing your uh, bar chart. Eddie and I have talked about this, and you'll see what my baseline is right now. Vision and values is 3.3. Support is 3.3, direction is 4.5, development 4, persuasion 3.5, and appreciation 3. So I'll give those results when I complete this project. The vision that I have for this particular pro project is to make sure that I'm providing the direction and development for everyone in District 57's executive committee team to complete an HPL if they want to achieve their Distinguished Toastmaster Award. In particular, anyone who's part of the what we call the DECM, the District Executive Committee meeting, should pursue this in the same term as their leadership. Forming my vision really came forward in integrating all the elements that I thought were important from the six dimensions of leadership. Your development of your team, the direction in which you're going to go, having the determination to get there. Sue captured it critically in saying that determination is going to be key. Supporting your team members gets you to become Distinguished Toastmasters in the very end. What we also have is trying to make this vision into a win-win-win circumstance. I don't want to have any schisms between any of the stakeholders. First off is that the area governors or division governors who undertake this should look at this as being a guided pathway to success to earning their distinguished Toastmaster. A major obstacle for anyone to achieve their distinguished Toastmaster award is completing the HPL in which you are rewarded with the Leadership Excellence Award. It also becomes a winning situation for the district overall. Sue and Mary Versailles, who was our area governor of the year, who actually took the, undertook this project, were both recognized as the outstanding area and division governors of the year to make this district a distinguished district throughout all of Toastmasters. And the last winning point is for this club, Toastmasters Leadership Club. I want this club to be recognized as the premier leadership development forum, not just in the district, but in all of the East Bay. The word needs to go out that excellence and expertise takes place here. And most importantly, we get to live into our mission. And I want to read that particularly for Sue. That the Toastmaster leadership mission statement is we develop and empower members to communicate and lead effectively in Toastmasters, in their personal and professional life, and in their community. Next slide. Winning the commitment. Winning the commitment is a process. 
in completing your high performance leadership program. It will be a process. It will involve planning, it will involve testing that plan, executing the plan, analyzing those results, giving feedback to all the stakeholders, and then going back to plan again for further success. In terms of winning the commitment, my first step is to identify all the stakeholders. If I want Toastmasters Leadership Club to be the premier leadership development forum in the East Bay, I need their buy-in. I need District 57's DECM buy-in. I need an action team, and I'm going to pass this out to Thomas, if you could, to serve as my guidance team. Several people on the guidance team are here, but you'll also notice names that will include the current District 57 leadership trio. District, the District Governor Todd Henry, Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Terry McDonald, and the Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, who has been here and a former member, Steve Taddy. But there are several others, and I just want to add that I will be looking to add more qualified candidates. There are several other parts. Please don't jump ahead, but I needed you to see that first part. In terms of having a success plan, it's going to consist of having several tools. One will be a timeline. Second will be checklists. You will see two of those things in the handout that I just gave, gave to you. And the third thing that we witnessed today, and it shows some shortcomings, is conferencing technology. Uh, I believe the first time we had Sue on that it worked a lot better today, and as much to Sue's credit and Eddie, that made it happen in a way that was acceptable for the target audience and the stakeholders. Also recruiting a guidance team. A guidance team for anyone doing their high performance leadership program, including myself, helps me see above the clouds in my own vision. I used to live in Pacifica, and there was a time when I thought I discovered Atlantis. <laughs> Reason being, I looked out 35 miles due west, and all the time on the horizon there were some clouds that covered up the Farallon Islands. And I say it was a good year and a half before there was perfect vision, a clear sky, that I saw these gigantic mountains rising out of the sea. So there are clouds in your vision that you don't realize can impede the greater vision that we want to undertake. Having an action team, and you'll see that action team is listed, that, are, that is persuading people to take on the high performance leadership program. And I was hoping more of them would be here. Thank you, Savita, for being here today. And I think critical to all success, but particularly in Toastmasters and in leadership, is coming up with developmental feedback, constructive feedback, evaluations, whatever you want to call it, we want something to build on and to continue to have building steps towards success. So in terms of winning the commitment, there are something I think that is critical for involving everyone in this process, including all the stakeholders. District 57 needs to provide year-round support to all of its leaders. It cannot just be a one-shot deal at a four-hour meeting in June for area and division governor training. It cannot simply consist of coming to a DECA meeting once a month and getting spoon-fed information. There is a significant schism between theory and practice. And as Sue mentioned, one shoe does not fit all, not in terms of advice or in leadership style or necessarily in the efforts to become successful. I also think that we need to look at this as a way of building an infrastructure of success and support. 
I say that because I asked Sue specifically, and I know Mary did too, thank this club for giving her some expertise in becoming more successful than they may have ever imagined. I want that to be a best practice for Toastmasters in District 57. And in doing so, we wind up coaching our future. When you coach others, you develop your own expertise, as well as instill confidence in the next set of leaders coming forward. So it continues to pay itself forward in terms of investing what you know, encouraging others to grow. And lastly, to set a bar of excellence in performing a high performance leadership program. Eddie Cater and I, and I think Gene may concur, we have rolled our eyes more than once in hearing some high performance leadership programs that people have undertook that did not quite meet a level of high impact to whatever community they were going to serve. So as HPL chair, I wanted to be able to at least give some essence to making sure that was going to happen. Have a high expectation of excellence. If you shoot for the stars, you may fall short, but land on the moon. And with that, I'm opening it up for questions and answers. And starting off with Eddie Cater. Sure. Uh, Terry, number six here, you said recruitment successor by June, but the vetting and the application start back in March. Why so late June, rec recruit a successor? Why so late? But, uh, I would say that they need to be identified and committed by June. Ah, okay. So if that's something I need to clarify, make sure, clarify I will. So if he, I'm going to please ask you to stand. Yeah. Number seven says, if not a current member must present phases one to five to TLC. So are we saying that if you're a member of TLC, you don't need to do that? No, you, well, that would be very short-sighted of you if you were to choose that option. But we are looking to say that everyone, we're encouraging people to participate. So I would think that if you didn't participate here, then you would be saying you didn't need our expertise. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So it's not, it's not like a mandated thing that we should present here. It's good to present. Right, but I am saying if you're not a member, you I'm should. asking. Yes. Okay. Okay. Highly encouraged. Highly okay. encouraged. <laughs> I don't want to make it seem like I'm racketeering, but. Thank you. Know, you. Right. I plead fifth. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Henry, this project number three is on direction and persuasion, the dimensions of those and utilization of those. I firmly advocate your expectation of training year round. One of the things that I felt as a division governor was lacking was we wait till the last second to provide AG training. And so my question is, throughout the year, will you continue to provide parts of the AG training, either through DECAMs or conferences or TLI or all the above? That's a good question. I hadn't necessarily put that into the ingredients of my pot. What I'm looking for people to grow as, if you take on this project, is getting that from your guidance team. So I think it was much more personalized for Sue and Mary if they got that there. Now, if I were to undertake this and present it at a decum, I would still want people participating in this project because you have to have a conference call or some other meeting with that smaller guidance team who will give you the specific action points and, and directions that you need. So, so your training is advocating just for the individual's HPL project rather than AG training, DG training, uh, area governor, division governor training throughout the year. Right. Simply because I just asked to attend that training and make the proposal, make the offer to anyone who was there if they wanted to participate. This is not a mandatory uh, project 
but it is a stretch if you're going to serve on a deck. Yeah. I, I, just to piggyback it, because what I'm hearing, for me, the HPL was important uh, because it provided additional roadmap that a success plan does not. But the success plan has to go hand in hand with the HPL. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go so I, I, what I'm seeing here as an education module is not just here's here's the program, the, the high performance and the expectations. The idea uh, and the, the methodology behind the HPL is is to take this and make it a bigger impact instead of just mediocre or or minimum. Uh, performance right metrics. right and you'll notice that the success plan is a requirement for completing this particular project it is a requirement for AGs and DGs for AGs and DGs uh, area governors division governors. Okay, sorry yes Allison Terry you have some very specific visions that I really understood I'm not sure I because I don't have enough History of those masters, but I understood where you're coming from to where you want this vision to be. What was what was the level or problem that your vision is accomplishing? Allison, that's a really good question, Allison, because my journey comes from being a Toastmaster back in 2001, where I just slipped into a club and had no clue what was going on. And just felt like whatever was happening was in that small universe. I was encouraged by others to take on leadership. And as I took on leadership and went down that path as an area governor who failed to do his first contest, still became distinguished. As a division governor who charted my first club, but still didn't realize the importance of following up and having mentors and sponsors for that club to be an ongoing success. To become a district governor who all of a sudden had an impact over thousands of Toastmasters here in the East Bay and realizing that 12 months was not enough time for me to make the impact that I would like. So I wanted to set up an infrastructure now that exceeds any one person or group of people serving this district. This district is an ongoing living organism that has cells that I won't necessarily die off, but move on. And we have to get new living bodies and energy in its place. And what better way than for people to know that they're stepping up into a vision and an organization that has a mission to become successful in the way that it's being presented. That there's a framework of support and development. And lastly, what I wish Sue had mentioned, appreciate those efforts. I'm not really clear on what you're driving at. I know a lot of this, of course, I know all this background. Mm -hmm. But are you, you've got here about, we're talking about area division governors just then, or are we talking about anyone that does an HPL? No, time? well, th this particular project is supporting the HPL for area and division governors. Okay. That's what this criteria is for. So that's what I'm going to be reporting on moving forward. Anyone else who has one? will be vetted. I'm going to encourage them to participate at Toastmasters Leadership Program, but it, again, it's not mandatory. I, only way I can really do this is for people to say they want to make sure that their time, they leverage their time and have it pay off. If you say you're going to be, to be, you're going to be an area governor for 12 months, why not have it pay off for you to also get your Leadership Excellence Award? And invest in your future, in the district's future. So Does that mean? Yeah, you're kind of holding it down to direct it. Right, right. but I am the, the HPL chair sure. for, for everyone else, and I will give suggestions, and I'm hoping people will come to this club to get feedback on any other HPLs. Okay. Just know, if you don't know by now, I am holding people to a higher standard of success and commitment. Get it done. Sue, do you have any questions? I don't think you want to, but I do want to say great presentation. I really appreciate it. Okay, I'll send you the slide. Hearing, no, I wish Randy, I'm glad Randy Ellington is here. He's one of uh, persons on my action team. 
and, and Savitha as well, who will be participating. I look forward to getting their feedback as well. But hearing no other questions, I will give control of the meeting to our Toastmasters Master. Talk for two minutes and then we'll go into the evaluation process. Thank you. Okay, um, he's done. Did you want to stick around for his evaluation? Almost there. Absolutely, my pleasure. We're going to collect all of that. Gene's going to scan it and send it off to you. Okay, you betcha. You too. Thanks, Jim. Uh, thanks. Minutes. All right, thank you, Mercy. Now we begin the evaluation portion. Sue again. This time, Jean will start it off. So please welcome our past district partner, Jean. Tyree, project three of your HPL, direction and persuasion, utilized. You did a great job. I think we've heard from enough of our members over time that we present these sort of segmented throughout whatever time frame we're looking at and people forget from what you said before. So your recap of your dimensions and your baseline, your mission, your core values, and your vision I think was well presented. I love the slides with the pictures rather than a bunch of words. I think that said it all. I think that was very well done. The tried and true method of plan, test, execute, analyze, and evaluate is a plan that I have heard through nursing school, through leadership training, I've heard it all over. So it's an effective way to present a project and to come up with the ability to improve the project as time goes on. And I think that what I'm hearing from you is your building from what you started with last year, creating a higher expectation this year, more defined goals, and I think that all will help in the long run. You have the, you talked about your success plan for the tools, the guidance team, the action teams, um, and the development of the individuals doing the HPL project. One of the questions that I had uh, you didn't, in, it talked about review specifics on roles, goals, and timetables. And I know that you didn't say it in this presentation, but you have said it in the past, where the expectation is that the adjust, uh, AG, area governor, or division governor would make a commitment through to August the following year that they would help bring the new person on board and get them started. Uh, 
I think that um, is the only one of these questions that I didn't quite hear in this particular setup, but I knew it from before. Your presentation was awesome. You did a great job in the slides. I, I don't ever have anything to say about how you present Tyreek because I think you do a great job. I, I think everybody else can agree. And great job answering the questions for the different uh, ones that came up. I think that at this point I'd like to ask you another question. You're indicating that this phase of your project or this actual HPL is really geared toward the area governors and the division governors and that you're developing your executive team and relationship to it. Who besides the current DTMs of this club uh, are able to be part of the guidance committee? They, they actually, they're listed on the, the handout that I gave, but I can give you a few names. Oh. They, uh, they, they include yourself, right. but also uh, Tanya Jensen, who's a past public relations officer and past uh, area, area and division governor. Uh, I included Mary as a successor in, the, in completing this program. I included... Okay, so it's yeah. on that list. I it's on the list. Yeah, there, it, it's expanding. Okay. Anybody else have a comment or two? Allison? I do because, you know, you're just so great at getting the point across and because you're such a good speaker that it's so easy to understand the points that you're making and follow along. As I was trying to write some notes, I didn't retain a lot. And it made me think of a marketing lesson, which I, we all, need to do better, especially me, um, which is to give maybe a few more specifics when you're talking about, um, you know, why should people jo be in the in the Toastmaster Leadership Club. I love when you spoke to Sabika about you know, how it will benefit her. But maybe a little more specific, like Sue did in her talk about the difficulty with the driving distance, or some specific that I could retain. And maybe that's visual, like Jean said, with images. The family question or something. And I know it's Quick, a general Quickly, thing. I was really hoping more of the people from the action team were here, and they would have been able to resonate with that question. Well, like, for example, but, infrastructure. What? Like, I'll just say, yeah, this is part of, this club is part of infrastructure, but also giving them the goals on that handout that I gave along with the checklist. I, that, that checklist is actually something that I shared with the action team, and I'll give it to the guidance team in as a Google Drive, as a Google Doc, that they're all seeing. Thank you. Another? Oh, I think we're out of time. Therefore, thank you very much. Thank you, Gene. Thank you. Let's take a five minute break. Will you do that for each There's cookies in the back for Please come up and hand them out to them. Table time. Welcome to you should be able to use the word of the day and you should speak off the cuff for two minutes not all two minutes and, and you have 30 seconds to wrap up but you must make sure right? minimum one minute yeah minimum of one minute but make sure to use the word of the day schism which is a separation and a division for the sake of our team, I would like to call on the first participant. Any, any volunteer? 
Okay. Randy just, just bow down his head. I'll say you have to mm -hmm. No, I'll start to read this part. Uh, okay. You insist. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You're one of the chosen Toastmasters of the Year. <laughs> As an example, how do you get involved in your community? Madam um, Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters, let me get this straight. As one of the, the most deserving Toastmasters of the year, <laughs> how do I get involved with the community, right? What a slow <laughs> that's, a, that's a very insightful question. There are several ways we get involved in the community. Some of them I focus on in terms of helping people grow. Others, I focus on bridging a gap, or a schism, if you were. The organizations and the communities that I've become involved with, I look for how does it make a difference in the world? How does it make a change? Because we only have a limited amount of time on this world. We have a limited time, a limited amount of time each day. So, we got to spend it in a way that enhances not only ourselves, but helps us get higher on the Maslow hierarchy of need to the self-actualization, self-realization. And that is helping each other. So I get involved with organizations that are going to make a difference in someone's life, whether it's to help them with limited resources or it helps them to feel secure, but something that matters most to others, rather than my own self-aggrandization. That's how I get involved in community relations, only because I am the most deserving Toastmaster that I know. of the year. Thank you. We belong to a different community and I would like to call on Svita. myself to the community. I am here, alive, and existing. And beyond that, I have divided my life into, the pie chart of my life is divided into three main sections. I have work, breadwinner, I have family, and I have community. And within that community, I have made Toastmasters a big chunk of the pie, apart from my temple, and I also volunteer at uh, a community health clinic. But coming back to Toastmasters, Toastmasters is the separator, the schism, if you will, between all my other activities. And within Toastmasters, the cherry on top at this moment is chartering the club, chartering a new club. And the, it's like a contagious bug. When you charter the new club, you realize how much pleasure it gives you and how many people, a minimum of 20 people it affects because you need a minimum of 20 people. So in my own experience, chartering one club just led to helping charter another club. And that is to my credit and I feel very proud. And recently, I'm very proud to say I was in Malaysia last week 
at the International Convention. And uh, Daniel Rex, the CEO, had a session for the first timers. And I was lucky enough to be picked for a table topic. <laughs> I was asked, what is the one moment in Toastmasters that you're very proud of? And I said the same thing, the chartering of a new club. So that is what I do to my community. Madam Toastmasters. Wow. Toastmasters, do you enjoy the, the, the meeting? Do you have any questions? Would you like to join? With that, I would like to call on you. Yeah. <laughs> Your question, Neil. You know, how would you encourage a person to join the Toastmasters community? I would like to talk a little bit about my experience as area governor to answer that question. When I first joined Toastmasters, I joined the group that's within the area D12, the Scout Masters, and that's specifically for project managers. And project managers, once you get your license, you have to maintain it so you get. You have to get these credits, and if you come to our, our Toastmasters meeting, you'll get uh, credits so you can maintain your license. So for a while, and to this day, a lot of our members still do this, but they, they just come for those credits, and it's just to keep the project management license. However, as I started learning about the Toastmaster way, I came in not even knowing anything about Toastmasters. Uh, it turns out that there's so much Toastmasters has to offer, and there's so much Toastmasters can give you in terms of development. And the more I'm involved in Toastmasters, the more I learn how much it can help you grow as a person. So at first, when I was doing the Toastmasters, uh, just following the curriculum, I, would, I focused on speech. Uh, and that was very helpful. Then I went a step further and then focused on leadership because I thought that wasn't, um, when I first joined, I thought that wasn't any value in that. Now I'm, I'm finding out that leadership is also very important too. So I would say that a lot of times when you join Toastmasters for the first time, you don't realize its full impact. And I would stress the amount of development that you'll get as you continue to go throughout the program and that's what I would stress. That's what I would tell anybody that joins Toastmasters. I think we have two more opportunities for two speakers. There was a disaster that just happened last Sunday. It's the Napa earthquake. What a great question. I'm sure most of us felt the earthquake. If, if not, if we woke, if we slept through the earthquake, first of all, you're either it lived so far away it didn't matter, or you sleep really well. 3:20 in the morning. One of the first thoughts I, I had was, did the chimney come down? But I didn't hear any rumbling. Did we have glass breakage? But I didn't hear any glass breaking. But it was so violent in its shake, I knew it was serious. And I turned on the news right away to see if there was any reports. Nothing. It was quiet. I went back to bed. Got up the next morning making coffee, turned on the morning news, and that's when it hit. 
And it wasn't just the fires in, in Fairfield, American Canyon. It wasn't the stone facades coming down of these historic buildings. It was all that wine. <laughs> <laughs> so my first step would be <laughs> an unorganized wine tasting. <laughs> Why cry over spilled wine? In all seriousness, I lived in Livermore during Loma Parade, and we had a number of homes that, that actually slipped off their foundations. Some were slab foundations and slipped off the sla slab foundations. We had some homes that chimneys did actually drop. I had a home here in Oakland where the chimney did separate from the wall. So we had some issues like that to deal with our neighborhood. And the first thing you do is you rally the neighbors. Got enough water? You got, do you need anything? Do you have any dry food? Do you have gas? Uh, if you don't have gas, you need a camping stove. Uh, you rally the troops. And I come to find out that the neighbors who are well-to-do, that is, they have gas, they have electric, they have water, will put a hose out, will run extension cords out, and will bring out their grills and their gas bottles and loan them or give them to the neighbors in need. Uh, so it's just a matter of rallying the troops, rallying the neighbors and getting everyone out. All joking aside, it's the only way to get it done is if someone is going to rally a cry or be there to help act, carry on that message. Madam Speaker, the top is my message. That ends our table topic section. And I would like to get the timer's report, please. Uh, Bob. I'm going to turn for table topics, but I can give you that timing for the table topics. Yeah, that's what's That's what's true. Ren was at 154. He qualified and used the word schism. Savita was at 154. She used the word schism. Neil was at 155. He did not use the word schism. And Eddie was at 270. He did not use the word schism. So, so we have qualifiers for Randy and Savita. Can you fill up your ballots and pass it? Where, where should we pass it? To? Who's the table topics person? That be you. Yeah. Oh, that would be me? Okay. Over there. So are we also voting for best speaker and best evaluator while we're at it? Can I get the, the timing? It's me. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my timer's report now. With Suhan, it's 21 minutes. Tyree, it's 19 minutes and 24 seconds. So, Tyree is within the allotted time, but Sue. Well, she had 30 seconds probably, after the first 15 and 30 seconds after the other five, so she's okay. She's, oh, she's okay? Okay. Yeah. We, 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 that's the speakers. The, the evaluation, Eddie Keeper. Did it for six minutes and five seconds. And Jim Cunningham for five minutes and 33 seconds. Oops. They are both no, over time. Uh, With that, I would like to welcome back our Toastmaster. Okay. All right. And now it's time for our guest, who is the general evaluator, to come up and Come up, the beef up. Well, let's Randy, just one, one so, 
and Neil three sews, and that's pretty great. Wow. Pretty good. Oh, and I just want to point out, I don't know if you're doing the the great gems, but I love the pie chart of my life. That is great. That was so cute. The pie chart of my life. Wasn't that cute? Thank you, Alison. Can we have a remaining give us a report? So do I, do I keep track of who needs more today? Or, no? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, the person who used word of day for the speech was Tyreen. He used it twice, which was really good. And I also kept track of nice uses of the language. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Tyree, I, I liked a lot of your usage, particularly for your, your like your business statement when you use the two words together, direction and development. Is these two words together? I like the reinforcement of those two, and also a mission statement. It's like those are techniques you use for mission statements and uh, visions. Uh, for mission statement, you had develop and empower. So that was good. That gives you a nice um, reinforcement of what you're trying to say. Let's see. Oh, and I liked how you said uh, when you lived at Pacifica, it was like you discovered Atlantis. <laughs> I like picture, picture, picturesque language like that. And then when you said shoot for the stars, even if you miss, you land on the moon. That was, I like that. And uh, Savita, right? I also like your um, pie chart of life. You know, it's a good um, metaphor. And Thomas, I enjoyed your, when you said, I think you were talking about leadership, you said not, it's not, leadership is not about spontaneous combustion, but is it, you have to set yourself on fire. I like that. <laughs> and I, I think a lot of people like Sue's, when she said, when she had to talk, somebody out, out of quitting, Area governor talk somebody off of the ledge. <laughs> that was pretty good. And that's all I have. Wonderful. Wonderful. I think we already have our time on report, so I will move on to the general evaluation. I've been given a long checklist. I am going to skip some of them. Um, yes, the meeting was set up, as as I'm sure you will always do. The venue was all ready. Uh, the meeting started one minute late, which was, uh, and it does have a question of, did all the members show up on time? I do not believe so today. The members were streaming in. Um, that may be a schism for a leadership club. I'm not very sure. The agenda was complete, and I appreciate the, all the last minute flexible stepping up. Um, Approximately how many members attended? Is that something we report on? Uh, we can all see for ourselves how many. And uh, the president, I ha I do have to give kudos to the president for all the efforts made to facilitate such an important project, which is the last piece, a last phase of the HBL project. So kudos to you, Mr. President. Again, in my experience, this was a schism because I had thought of Toastmasters as always being no remote. But I did realize and learn today that remote is allowed too, which was learning for me. I always told people it's always face to face. So that's one comment I had about that. And uh, all the speakers and the role players uh, used proper terminology in in the entire protocol in handing over control. And um, I couldn't have expected anything less from a leadership club. The Toastmaster maintained the two minute duration for the evaluations. And the Topic Master, I really love the fact that you mentioned that word of the day has to be used to qualify. I remember I was here last time. I didn't know that and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> and apart from the checklist, I do have some uh, special comments. I think the evaluation of Sue was excellent, Eddie. Uh, 
I concur with all that you said. The only comment I, I would have had for Sue uh, is that she could have given examples. I know that when Alison asked, she came up with an example, but her speech would have been uh, accentuated if she had given more examples along the way of how it was achieved, how her goals were achieved. She did give an example of the distance, but more would have been better. I think the timer did a great job. It was difficult for an HPL speech to keep track of time, especially because it was a Q&A. And I think the timer did a very good job. And Tyree, what can I say? It was a wonderful presentation. Uh, it definitely brought me a few steps closer to the understanding of the HPL project. It's always a cloud for me. And coming here really helped me today. And the interesting point is, you are on my guidance committee for my HPL project, and I'm on your action committee for your HPL project. So that's a nice dynamic we have here. And overall, I would say I learned a lot at this meeting, and it was a great one. Thank you. Thank you. Show the fine IP detail of your evaluation. And my comments about the meeting, I do want to say that we were looking in poor shape. And we came to seven, there were about five members of the club in the room. At least three people didn't turn up, they had roles and no indication. It was wonderful that our guest pulled us through. This lady, Neil, I believe, and just came through and that was really excellent. Ken, you do a fine job back there. You need to join this club to, so we can post those videos. Yeah, we can do that take. tonight if somebody needs to take the money. Jeff? And also you'll get the opportunity, of course, to speak and do all the other roles. That's okay. excellent news. Something else you mentioned is that's not very professional if we turn up late. And I don't want to go around the club and I won't like, battering people's names or anything. I'm not going to haul you out. But I absolutely agree. I, I tend to be late for things, but I try to get here at least 10 minutes before, especially when I'm Toastmaster, and I usually do make it on time. We all can do it. And I know if we do, it would be like we're in a band and we get here, we're all on time, we're all ready to go, we'll be a much better club. But that's Let's give it up for Thomas. Most of us are from different club experiences. Some of us, this is our only club experience. The role of Toastmaster is a magician. It's a conductor. It is the stage manager. It is the audience it all wrapped up into one role the Toastmaster so when things don't come together at the start of the meeting the magician has to pull a rabbit out of his hat or her hat and make things happen and I, uh, Thomas thank you for making things happen tonight so uh, the I don't want to belabor the point about being on time uh, so I will send out an email and belabor it <laughs> <laughs> We understand the importance, and, and the fact is, is that we're going to end on time as well. We have some business to conduct, and unfortunately, uh, does someone have a copy of next week's schedule? No, of course I, 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 do, I do know there are several walls open, particularly the Toastmaster. Definitely the Toastmaster. All right. Can I do my question and send that around before? Actually, you can Actually, you know, why don't we do that now, and we'll we'll find out who the Toastmaster is for next week. Allison has a question to pose for us. Please give her your your time and attention, please. Allison, please. Thank you, Thomas. Because uh, I didn't give Thomas much notice about this, but what I did was assemble the images from our Facebook page, which I'm going to pass around. I want you to imagine that you're thinking of joining this club and you don't really know anything about Toastmasters or anything about us 
And I want you to put a little tick mark. You know how you go one, two, three, four, five? Mm -hmm. Put a little, tick, little, little tiny tick mark underneath the photos that would go, I might want to learn about these people. I might want to, I might want to find something. Just because we want to do a little evaluation. So I'm going to just pass it around. And so so quickly, yeah. it, um, the more ticks means it's more effective. Yeah, it means that you'd like it. But it would attract you to want to learn more. Okay. Read the actual Facebook page. Right. As if you could read a Facebook page. Yes. So how many votes do you... As many as you want. Which ones would just oh, make you go... This one definitely gets <laughs> Okay, the one of yourself is okay too. Yeah. Thank you, and then and after we get those results, I'll tell you the answer. Thank you. We need a Toastmaster. Who's ready to step up to the role for next week? Mr. Wonderful? No, I'm sorry, you come from another meeting. I'm, I, I know that's... I was going to task you with that. Oh, okay. Okay, that's it. Seriously, I will get you on the schedule and so you're able to oh, tweak the agenda. I'm doing tabletop business. Okay. Sorry. All right. That's okay. That's all right. We'll find someone out. We'll, we'll get someone. Um, you know what? Since we don't have it in Paula in absentia, yeah. I'll sign Paula. Yeah. <laughs> because if I am not signed in for any role, I will volunteer too. Okay. Okay. So Mer Mercy is a, as, okay. Excellent. Uh, as, as to the other roles, we have uh, three speaking roles. Uh, do, does anyone remember if they have a speaking role or no, not next I'm, week? I'm one of the speaking. Well, uh, Thomas is one. I don't know if the other I'm one. Okay, uh, Ken pending uh, application. <laughs> uh, and Bob. One? What? Do you have an application? No, I don't. Does anybody here have an application? Uh -huh. it's, it's in the backup kit, which Paula has. And there's none in the briefcase? <gasps> I might have one. I might have one. Okay. Uh, all right, so those are our speakers. Excellent. The other business items are area contest September 23rd. Is that correct, Randy? 22nd. 20, September 22nd? It's my birthday. Is this for you? Are you going to have a party? I'm sorry, Randy, our division governor. Randy, could you um, give us a recap on the area contest, the Area D30 contest? Where, when? Oh, okay. <coughs> the area, area. I'm, by the end of this whole year, by June 30th, I will probably be able to say area well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing. The area contest for D30, which is this club, is on Monday the 22nd. The location is ERA Lounge. I think it's like a bar. I'm really curious how this is going to work. But it's at the corner of Grand and Broadway. It's right a few doors down from Bose. So we can take over Bose if it's not going to work. And it's the usual timing. I believe it starts at 7 tonight. And then the following night will be Neil's contest, which will be here. Can you say that date one more time? The first one. September 22nd. 22nd. Okay. And, and of course, Jason's looking for all the help he can get, okay. including the uh, contest chair. Okay. Thank you. And one more thing to put on our calendar in, uh, up front is the Division D contest pending the results of all the different area contests. You're, you gave a tentative date. Uh, has that changed or is it still the same? Oh, uh, well, after our conversation today, yeah, I'm going to stick with my date for my okay. contest. So please. But, I, I love this exercise. <laughs> That's Thursday. Thursday, this October the 23rd, is the Division D contest. That also will be held here at East Lane Mud. The usual time it applies, 7 o'clock start, 6.30 briefing. And I'll add more details as time goes by. And I, too, am with probably if I can get, but I'm going to 
start picking people out of the area projects as they occur in the transfer. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. October 30th. Wow, a, October's already a busy month. October 30th is our fifth Wednesday. That's our fifth Wednesday meeting model where we're offsite. October 29th. Yeah, because the uh, 23rd is a Thursday. The 29th? October 29th. Is a Wednesday. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Let me uh, change that. I wrote it down from memory. That's bad. October 29th, our fifth Wednesday, offsite. And cheering that is Tyree and Thomas. If you have any suggestions, now is the time to get those suggestions to Tyree and Thomas so that they can get their plans together, that we can have this, uh, we can invite past members as well as all of our charter members if they're still alive. alive. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no other business. Any business from our members? Very quickly, I'd love to get everybody's feedback of written evaluations. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, can I get the and information? Should I, I'll just do it next time. So can yeah. Right. Okay. And yes. get, for Sue, give them to Jean so she can. Okay. Justin Lola is, um, okay. I, I haven't spoken to Justin in the last I heard. He was, you know, doing the family thing. He's such a fellow. Okay, yeah, 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 he did. Uh, tonight was the uh, rosary. In the Catholic tradition, they, they do a rosary service uh, the night before the funeral, or the evening uh, uh, before the funeral. Tomorrow is the funeral, and I believe it's 10.30 or 11 o'clock. I'm not entirely sure of the exact time at St. Edward's in Newark. Um, that's the only information I have. I did not know that his father was an MD. Yeah. Um, I, I spoke with Justin. I spoke with him last week. Thursday, and we texted mm -hmm. each other. Yeah, so, same, same here. So, he's managing best. Um, interestingly enough, that he was concerned with other business, getting making sure that Sue was amply covered, uh, some of the business of the district because he's the district public relations officer, and so he was answering some of those emails. Uh, but I know that when he does, when things are settling in the dust clears, and that when he goes back to his email, he will have a bucket load of email to sort through. May I make a suggestion? I, I sent him a card, but I think something mm -hmm. that we can do as a club for any occasion such as this, if we can get a card. And, and like you know, that was su suggested too, but I also think that if we all send our own individual uh, cards too, and if you like, I, I can send that email out to you individuals, um, to our members. Uh, make sure that you have his uh, mailing address. I'm, I know he'll be fine with the address being given. Uh, yeah. Please. Okay. Please. Okay. And just because the funeral is tomorrow does not mean that it's too late to send condolence cards. Um, so having said that, do what you will. Uh, the sooner they're sent, the, the, the better. And if you want to send... I don't know what the family's asking for. The, the obituary wasn't clear on what they were looking for as far as you know, some families, like trees planted or flowers or whatever. Um, just do what your heart tells you to do. Anything else? You will be sitting out for the others. Yes, I'll send that out tonight. Winners. Winners. Oh, yes. Win a winner, chicken dinner. Our toast match will close with our winners tonight. Well, that's going to be tough. <laughs> our, <laughs> our evaluator is oh, wait, over. neither we didn't make it <laughs> well let me tell you for our table topics speaker Sue Han no well, that would be I, 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 I confuse you our table topics winner is Savita Settler oh. Savita oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait right here. And our best speaker for the evening is Suhan. Hey. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> All 
our winner is Sue Han! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're adjourned. Eddie? Yes. Who's going to take the bag?